that was weird. Sorry about the lack of music for a bit there. I guess I accidentally paused it. My bad. Um, alright, one second. Let me I'm gonna adjust the mic volume just a tad because I tend to get a little loud when we play this game. Alright, let's at least put it here. Hi, how's it going? Good evening. What is it? Today's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, people. Oops. That's not starting up the game. That's the wrong damn window. Alright, so let me get the game started here. Um, I almost played no I almost played no pixel, but I didn't really get like it was a pretty decent spot, but then I was like, well, from where I am now, it's gonna be probably waiting in queue for another hour, or I could just go play Phoenix Wright. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna play Phoenix Wright. Get more get more video gaming in. Oh, I didn't save the uh Oh there it goes. Alright, full screen. Okay. That's Put an end to that one, and we're gonna go over here, tell people we live. Maybe I should like actually tell my friends on Facebook once in a while that I do stream. All right, hold on. Let's not mess this up. Boop, boop, boop. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Jaku ten Saibon now. All right. Threw that out there. I'm getting back in. Okay, let's switch the switch the screen now. And there's the game. Here we go. Awesome. If I need to adjust the volume and all, just let me know. Alright, so where do we leave off? We... What were we doing? Uh, we... Finished investigating the office. We're gonna be Maya's lawyer. Uh, Maya is Mia's sister. Mia is the victim and the... And super deads now. Um... And the prosecutor we're going to be going up against is Edgeworth and his dumb cravat. I say dumb, but I love it. It's dumb in a good way. So, yeah, here we go. It's trial time. September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number one. We live in, in the future. When we started this game, we were last week. But now, we're in the future. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Thank God, because I was not ready to do the April May voice right now. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. 
I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the Thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as, as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Uh, the murder scene, the Faye and Co Company Law Offices. Now, detective. Y yes, sir! You immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir! I had hard evidence she did it, sir! Hmm, Detective Gumshoe? Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Ooh, testimony time. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. That's us. We're Phoenix. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. Hmm, the very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Smack? Who's smacking me? What? Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It's worked lots of times. Heh, <laughs> should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Maya Faye's arrest. Alright, uh, as soon as the phone call came in, he rushed over press. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across the crime... Sorry. Right across from the crime scene. Hmm. Okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. Hey, let's see, are two people there already? Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right. I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. I'm pretty sure that's just Twitch saying I can monitor it from... Yep. Alright. Yes, sir! Uh, defendant was Maya Faye, and it was me and Maya. Are you absolutely sure it was a- This is kind of a dumb thing to ask when pressing, in my opinion. Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like- like the suspicious people at a crime scene! Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. It didn't cost me any health, so I think it's fine. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why's that? What's your reason? I had a witness. Hold on just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, 
You said you'd rest her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss Maya is suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Ugh. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on that on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. That's where we're gonna drive a hole through this thing because she died instantaneously. Ooh, big brain. <clears throat> How's that? How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Poor Dick. Ah, uh, eh. I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about you, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Press everything. Examine the scene. And did you find any evidence? Now, now, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen. I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. Found, found the memo. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ho-ho! Then who did write it, smarty pants? Who? Um... The killer? The, the killer! Anyone could see that! Huh? You're saying the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please. She was framed! God damn it, Edgeworth. Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? I'm getting to that! Uh... Ha! <laughs> I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Get C Gaming! Thank you so much for the follow! I hope you're having a good night. How are you? You see, you're a man of simple taste. You see, Ace Attorney, you follow. Hey, I appreciate that! And Ace Attorney is a great game series that I haven't played in a long time, so I'm getting a refresher before we start on the new stuff. Oh, that's Maya? Oh, that's so cute! I love her! Well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Yeah, let's press it anyway. Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal. Uh-oh. Sounded pretty confident. This might not be good. Test results show that the blood was the victim's. What kind of tests were these again? Huh? What kind? Um, well... Here they take the, um, little bits in the blood, the hemoglobo... Hermogoblins... Hobgob... Hermogoblin bobbin! I, I refuse to testify on this matter, pal! I'm no expert on blood tests! 
Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. <laughs> Thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir. Detective Gumshoe. Y yeah I look forward to your next evaluation, as should you. Aw, poor Gumshoe. Oh, that was a mess. Right, where was I? Also, there's blood found on the victim's finger. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. Hmm, she was right-handed. Ha ha ha! Nice try! Uh-oh. I guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. Is this the one? Before she died, she wrote the, vic the victim- Nope, yep, yep, that's the one! That's the one! We need... Death was instantaneous. OBJECTION! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? What? what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it, who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But No butting your way out of this one, detective. Ooh, we got him. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Shut up, Edgeworth. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Oh. <laughs> we shouldn't have this. Um... Well, okay, the murder happened at nighttime, so I guess it was technically the day after, right? It was the day after the murder. Prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, your honor. Oh, son of a- God damn it, Edgeworth! What? A second autopsy report was performed yesterday, at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. You s no way! Your honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. Damn it. That is all. I see! Damn you, Edgeworth! I should have known you'd have something up to your sleeve. That smug bastard. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? Uh... I don't really like any of these. Man. I feel a little bad for Gumshoe. And Edgeworth is under suspicion for forging evidence, so I guess that's the right thing to say. We definitely don't want to say the last one, that's bad. Right. Sorry, Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? That's a good question. Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, your honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Died from a blow by a blunt object. May have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, your honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the con that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Oh dear, here we go. 
Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Oops, I knocked over my water. It's fine, it has a cap on it. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Phoenix, to be fair, you're the one with your mind in the gutter. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Aww, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. That's not fair. <laughs> Tell us where you were on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred. Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Company law offices. Mm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Hmm. Well, your honor? I see. It is remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, your honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? Where about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Oh my god, Judge. Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. I hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Oh, hell yeah. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Alright. Why did you do that? Why did she look out the window? That's what we're asking. Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling! Oh my god. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one? Um, I'm gonna get- eh, let's just do it. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I- Ooh! Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. B badgering You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop him! Poor girl! Order! Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? And then she saw the woman. The woman with the long hair. That was Mia Fey? Um, hmm. Slender sort of, well, some people might say pretty. That's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her. Alright, and he's, she's saying that it was the mousy girl. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She had a girlish physique, 
I'm gonna know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Uh, I might question the testimony, because we figured out when we went to the hotel that you can't, wouldn't really be able to make out anything by looking out the window from across the street. Like, you wouldn't be able to make out details like that, so it seems fishy. Hold on a minute, that testimony stinks! <laughs> what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Uh, you saw nothing! Did you really see the defendant at all? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fay, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Oh, very true. Oh, she's twitching. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis. Except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. Yeah, we do. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Roar! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw! I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. Promise! Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Alright, at least we're moving forward. I did see everything! I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. And the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon! I saw it! I did! That... That clock! That kind of statuey clock thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> How does she know it was a clock? I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. She's full shit! Please begin the cross-examination. So, you saw me then, too? Of course! I'd remember that spiky hair anyway. Spiky? The witness will refrain from personal attacks on the defense attorney. Aw, was I a bad girl? I'm sorry. This is really hard to keep that up, by the way. <laughs> Very well, continue. Uh, victim dodged. Is that right as in your right, as you looked from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right! It was my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Uh, hippie clothes ran after her. How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes. Rude. That's what you- I mean, that's what she was wearing! Oh, and her hair was all done up like a bun! Uh, what happened then? Hit her with the weapon. Where did this weapon come from? She picked it up from the desk. I see. What sort of weapon was it? The clock. She's calling it a clock. Bullshit! You can't tell it's a fucking clock! Yep, let's do this. Objection! Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? 
You just said that this statue of the Thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. It! Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know oh, that this was a clock? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. No, it's not! You full of shit! The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. It's not trivial. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. Hell yeah, object to that. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Hell yeah. Phew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? That's because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fane Company? N n no, hey, I didn't say that. I why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> but but we know that Mia took out the clockwork, so there's no way that she would have heard that because it wasn't functional. The law offices of Faye and Company, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? Oh, hell no. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing. It's clockwork. How could you possibly? Just take a look right now. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing. It's clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright. Would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. F fat Well, Miss May. Oh god damn it, Edgeworth, I hate you and your smug ass face. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid that you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. When would there have been time to do that? Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? <gasps> the cell phone conversation. Ho oh, ho, impossible, of course. I have proof. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening, and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. Evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Cell phone. Take that. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Woohoo, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait. This isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. 
Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Grumble, grumble. A good detective, but I remember he's up for evaluation soon. Ooh, that's mean. Gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Yeah, me too. Me too, Phoenix. Let's hear the conversation. Beep. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take out the clockwork out. Sorry, I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Beep. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? Well, 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 isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness has seen it before. That would make sense. No, it doesn't, because it's only two in the world. Larry made them. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Oh, hell yes. The witness claims she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to the court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen this clock before. Made by Larry Butts. Take that! It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. Wh what? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Ooh, we got you. <laughs> oh? Excuse is not on sale today? Ooh. <laughs> oh, shit. She's crazy! What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it! And she should die for it! Damn. She went all crazy. Oh, whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves! Th this is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh? me? Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know this weapon was a clock? Look at this face. Can't see my cursor, but it's circling her. Look at that face. Hmm. Oh, dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Um... Maybe she held it? Or did she hear about it? Oh, she heard about it because she tapped the phone. Alright. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it, then. Show me that evidence proving the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Wiretap. Take that! Have a look at this. Ah! Ooh, th that! <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Are we allowed to use that as evidence? Is this legal? Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia's Faye's phone, weren't you not? Ooh, ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. 
not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. Oh, hell yeah. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Yeah, she did. Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can! It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... Open recording. Right? 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 I hope I'm not wrong. That'd be really bad. <laughs> I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Beep. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I- I- Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You... you liar! Damn. She's all twitchy now. It's no fair! All of you ganging up on me like that? Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Uh, why the wiretap? Because there's no proof that she did it. I mean, she was also across the street, so there's no way she could have killed her in that amount of time and gotten back across. Anyway. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. I have to. Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping er irrelevant? Nope. God, she's saying exactly what Edward wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. Cahoots! She's in cahoots! While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you ha tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that. And of course, I can and will. Can't be serious. No way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmm. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Also watered down. Doesn't taste good, by the way. Uh, iced coffee. Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. I didn't say she was! I just think it's suspicious! So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss, Ma Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well... Come 
on, think of something. Uh, should we call the bellboy? Let's call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. You think you've s I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the bell that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. I mean, obviously, the timing doesn't line up for her to be the killer, so it's fine. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. You know, you're getting a little ahead of yourself, Edward. That is my condition. What? You better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Oh, we're gonna question the hell out of that bellboy. That's what we're gonna do. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for... Well, everything. Understood. Accept your condition. Hmm. <laughs> Fool. You fell right into my trap. Did he... Am I getting trap carded? Are we playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait! Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. Is he just, like, conveniently here? This is why it's Law and Order, but anime. Alright. Put the water down. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado... The witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Miss May's room service. I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. Hold on. Let's look over... Wait. What's that? Murder scene. Oh, I don't know where we're gonna go with this, but we'll... let's just press and see what do. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Mile will be finished. All right, head bellboy, press. What exactly is it you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir? I check in guests, I check out guests, I clean rooms, I make beds. I even deliver room service, sir. I checked Miss May in personally. Are you always so... so prim? Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking frivolous questions. Uh, I received a call at 8 o'clock in the evening. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? You're just grasping at straws, Phoenix. I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... <coughs> <coughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Oh, he totally was looking at her boobas. Yes, what then? Uh, ask for iced coffee at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed the details several times. 
She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. Brought her at the... Okay. Precisely nine o'clock, then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, nine o'clock p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, tee hee, I'd like to, like, I'd like, like, iced coffee exactly at nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine o'clock, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? Um, man, I don't know. What I should I present the autopsy to that? I'm gonna keep pressing. Just, I'm not totally sure yet. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, sh she, the guest, sir, favored me with a, um, <clears throat> embrasseur, sir. Embrasseur? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir, but not French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. That sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is, is that it? Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross exam- Oh shit, did I fuck up? Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest! W wait! Please wait! Yes? Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Um... Okay. So she probably has someone staying with her. Because there were two glasses on the table. Did I get a new camera? No, I did not get a new camera, but I changed the position of my green screen to better line up with the camera. Um, and adjusted the lighting and everything, so yeah, it looks a lot better now. It was a reconfiguration after the reconfiguration, so that helped a lot. Hmm... Yeah, it definitely looks like way better. It's nice. I'm a peanut brain, but this is like a bigger brain than I have. But we'll we'll go with room service and hope I didn't screw up. T tell me again about er uh, room service. Uh, again, sir. Exactly nine o'clock. I delivered room service to Miss May in room three o three. The guest had requested iced coffee. Eighteen dollars was the charge, as I recall. I see. Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Y yes well, iced coffee for two, you know. And we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? Yeah, we got him! For two! That's the problem here! What did you say? Ah, oh, er, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object! That was objectionable. Edgeworth, you're losing it. 
Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. <laughs> yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you're... you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention! Ah, yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... Hey! Edgeworth, you slimy little bastard! What the fuck?! He asked me not to mention if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. Y you fool! You bastard! How dare you! I've done it. I've won! I wouldn't say won. But at least we put off Maya getting carted off. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man with Miss May, duh. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof! Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? Suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. God damn it, Edgeworth. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are... ludicrous! Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <clears throat> yes, your honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Fay. Court is adjourned. Woohoo, we survived! Good job, us. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. in District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! R really I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and the trembling lips. What? Sent shivers up my spine. Mmm, if you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Uh, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms don't work everywhere. Nice. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm gonna find out more about this man. You think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis... Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. Thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. Uh, the victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. Okay. That's gonna probably come into play. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued! I made it! I made it through the day! Good job, us. 
Hell yeah, we need to save. September 7th, 3, 11 p.m. Detention Center Visitor's Room. Well, hello! Thanks for the claps. I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite... moving. Not, you stinking lawyer! I hope you die! Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh the fallen Miss May! N no not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there's nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Please, you're scaring the security guard. So, what's it you wish to ask of me then? Hmm. For starters, how did you get to be so totally whacked? Let's look at the poor security guard. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch. Real pro, this guy. Or maybe he just doesn't see get to see a lot of women like Miss May in here. Smile for the camera. That man. What about the man who stayed with you in your hotel room? Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose! Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. Wiretap. Why did you place a wiretap on Mia's phone? Aw, oh, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold, so criminal. Um, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in lawyer school, hmm. Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Oh, that does it, bottom-feeding scum-sucking lawyer! B bottom I can't tell. Does she have a thing against lawyers? Or just against me? Man, she angry. She gonna get mad if I show her the the badge? Hey, guess what? Actually, I um really hate your guts. So get lost, because well, I'm not cooperating. Thanks, I noticed. Um Man, she's psycho. Alright, let's try. Nope, that's not gonna get us anything different. What if I show you your wiretap? Nope. Mm, your own testimony? Nope. Alright, I gotta go find something then and then come back to her. Right now we got nothing. You crazy lady. Alright, let's try... Let's go to the scene. September 7th, Faye and Company Law Offices. Looks like Forensics is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshoe's nowhere in sight. The police really gave this place a working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. I suppose it can't hurt to take a look around, though. Plant. Mia's favorite potted plant. I guess I'll have to water it now. Aww. Old movie poster. Apparently this was the first movie that made me a cry when she saw it. I'll have to check it out one of these days. Ooh, let's look out the window. The sky is blue and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. Hmm. Desk? Mia's desk. Perfectly clean as always. The only thing it's missing is Mia. Couldn't cram more legal books. Are some of the files missing? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I'm imagining things. Oh, okay. Never mind. How do I... I can't get to the other side anymore? Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go to the hotel. September 7th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare say so myself. Oh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewaters rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer used a wiretap. 
We can charge a premium for the room, of course. It'll be great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa, Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you are an honored guest. Please let me know if there's anything I can bring you. Uh, I guess we can look around. Here's the wiretap. Oh, there's a screwdriver still... There's still a screwdriver stuck in that drawer. Ah, please leave that as it is, sir. That's the drawer of terror. Hiding place of the murderer's wiretap. It's set to become one of the most popular attractions here. This guy's serious. I don't believe it. A vase, as expected. Not good with flower names, except maybe tulips and sunflowers. Ah, uh, still scene painting. Wait, should that be still life? Whatever. One of those is hanging on the wall. A bottle and two glasses rest on the table. Why hasn't he cleaned these up by now? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir, but if you could please refrain from touching those. It's part of the decor. I call it the last drink before murder. We'll be famous, the talk of the hotel industry. Jesus. Nice weather again today. I can see the Fane Company law offices, of course. Ah, yes. We plan to install a telescope in that window, of course. Just five dollars will earn you a three minute of... Three minutes of a view to kill. Jeez. They're like really trying to milk this shit. J just kidding, sir. <laughs> By that look in his eyes, I'd say he was more than serious. Hey, isn't that like an invasion of our privacy at the law office? Simple bed. It's been recently made. Nothing eye-catching here. Alright. Talk to me. Talk to me about Miss May. About Miss May... Oh, her? Sir, not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most suspicious person here is this guy. The man with May. I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I are of the same ilk. Both carry the scent of danger. There we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo? Hmm. Um, where are we gonna get a photo? Could you tell me more about this hotel? Absolutely! And on that subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel. Murder Manor. Oh my god, they're so over the top. Well, what do you think? Um, sounds great. Whatever floats your teeth set. He's a psycho. Uh, hey, you know anything about this? I'm sorry. All I could think about during the trial was the hotel. I wasn't paying much attention to the evidence. Can I show you my badge? I love doing that. I'm so no. Nope, he ain't gonna say shit. Uh, wiretap? Nope. Alright. Listening in on the way home. Hey, welcome. Welcome back. We made it through the trial. Good job, us. And now we're on day two of investigation. April May's a crazy. And the bellboy is also crazy. There's a lot of crazy people in this game. It's filled with psychopaths. Alright, let's go to the law office. I don't know where we're gonna Whoa, where'd the painting go? September 7th, Grossberg Law Offices. Huh, looks like Grossberg is out today. Again? Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason? Dude, what the fuck? Wait a second. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah. Yeah, it was a painting of... Fisherman? Dude, I don't remember. <laughs> Wasn't it? It wasn't a very memorable painting, anyhow. Oh, I guess it didn't matter. 
An expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. Table for clients. Hmm. An elegant ebony case. And if I'm not mistaken, that liar is made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone here has got money to burn. Wait, what's this? What's this? Old photos. There are two lying here. Something's been written in pencil on the backs. DL6 in incident. Exhibit A. DL6 incident. Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. Not, I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. Photograph quietly added to the court record. Can I take the other one? Photo lies on the desk. Maybe I should switch it with the one I took? Oh. Um, I'll come back for this. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves filled with expensive looking books. Hmm, funny, they don't look like they've ever been read. Okay, nothing new there. Um, I think I know what to do with this photo. Wait, do I? I want to show it to Maya, but... Where do I find Maya? That's the real question here. Okay, let's... I guess we'll move around? You again! Can't take a hint and stay gone! Hey! The only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me! Oh, so it's my fault now? You don't just have spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart! Ooh, harsh. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. <gasps> no! You know anything about this? Any thoughts about this photograph? Who's that? Your mother? Ugh. Looks like I've just been wasting my time. Mm. I think I need the other photo. Let's go back to the office and swap photos. Give me that one. Photo lies on the desk. Yeah, switch it. Swap it. Okay. So let's... Alright, we gotta go and move. And we're gonna go to the detention center. How about this one? Have a look at this. Look, I said several times, I'm not telling you. Ooh, she's twitchy. Where did you? Aha! A reaction! This is him, isn't it? What? Who? When? Why? It is him. This is the man who stayed in your hotel room the night of the murder. No! No, that's not right! Nice try, Miss Cooperative. D do you have proof that was him? Hmm? Y yeah, proof! Show me proof! I'm so close. Ooh, let's let's show it to the bellboy. Bellboy, help me! Take a look at this photo. And that's him, detective. Ooh. Ooh, we got new music, too. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No, no, I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about I write an affidavit swearing that that's him? An affidavit? This guy's way too excited about this. Yeah, write it down. Give it to me. Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. Hence, from henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Oh my god. Just hurry up and write it! <laughs> Bellboy's affidavit, affid- ah. Words are hard. Affidavit added to the court record. Describes the man who stayed with Miss May at the hotel on the night of the murder. Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. Heck yeah, got what we wanted. Alright. Let's get her! Let's get her, guys. Uh, not that one. Yeah, that one. There's a lot of stuff in my bag now. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The bellboy's affidavit. It tells us everything he saw. Such as the man you checked in with. Who was most definitely this guy? Ooh, she mad. Now I'm getting somewhere. Uh... 
Uh, should I just push her? Let's push her. She's mean to me. This is it. All or nothing. Time to do a little bluff. No use playing dumb. If indeed that's an act. If you don't talk, I'm talking- I'm taking this to the info to the press. What?! Even though he should have been witness to murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have a field day with his reputation. Ooh, fine! I'll talk! You- you win, liar! Yes! Man, that felt good. It's great to be alive! Why are you pumping your fists in the air? Am I really doing that? <clears throat> now, tell me about the man you were with. That man, he's my boss. Red White, the president of the Information Gathering Conglomerate Blue Corp. Red White? Information Gathering? Well, I suppose you could call it a detective agency. Hmm. So this is the man that was with you the night of the murder? I'm... I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. It's okay. I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Mr. Red White, at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. Time to take action. Bellboy's affidavit was discarded. What? Oh, um, okay. Anything else for me? Nope, okay. Alright, I guess we're going to Blue Corp. Hey, that's the photo! I mean, painting. Why is it doing here? That's the one from the Grossberg Law Office. Ah, sorry, I had to stretch. Okay. September 7th, Blue Corp Inc. CEO's office. What's with the surreal decor? Welcome! Please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the... Your name! What's your name? I was just inquirably asking the title that you go by. Uh, right. Phoenix Wright. Inquirably? Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary? I have clients who talk like this and it's, they're like so dumb because the moment that you show them up with actual big words, they shut the hell up. It's really funny. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official. My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I am not used to conversing with the wordily challenged. What a fruitcake. Hmm, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Yipes, this guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. Hey, I have questions about this. Haven't I seen this somewhere? Is this a replica? Ridiculosity! I have no interest in anything but originals. That right there is a bona fide original. Worth five million for sure. Hmm. No clues here. No clues here. I'm guessing this is supposed to be a desk. My, my, my. This is quite the thing. It is modeled on my body, you see? Well, does its sleek randature not inspire you? Oh! Oh, I see. Oops. Sorry. This is him without a head? Unless his head's on the other side. This is a freaking weird desk! <laughs> Should we just call it the butt desk? An impressive lineup of trophies. Judges special runner-up, best participation, judges cooperation award, special good try prize? Hmm. Where judges and special kind of stand out? A statue of a man holding up the world. 
The blue corp sign s certainly stands out enough. The model for the man is, of course, Mr. White. Truly a work of art, but probably too butatious for you to appreciate, correct? Is butatious a real word? I have questions now. I think it's a little too butatious for just about anyone to appreciate. Talk to me. Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct! She was my secretariat! What a shock it was to hear what she had done! What she had done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed! She is paid to answer phones! Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as part of her duties. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. I don't believe you. You are full of shit. It is ineffable that she would do this. Sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy, has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter, that bellboy can say what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. Hmm, it raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? You should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh ho ho! The police! The courts! To me, they are mere toys. Play things for my amusement. Hmm. What kind of company is Blue Corp anyway? Ah, excellent question! We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future, you might say. We are the future. Sell information? In just 10 years, I built this business up into the grand office you see now. Ah, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I read why the Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabulistic, is it not? Red, white, and blue. Very... Okay. Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? That big painting on the wall over there? Uh... When did you get it? Say, when did you get that painting? Hmm, no idea. I forgot. I've seen that painting before. Yesterday, in fact. Why did I find that painting here today? Mr. Wrong, was it? Hey! That's rude. Right? It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? Lawyer? No, my feeble friend. A mere lawyer. Worth nothing. Zilch, zippo, nada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney, Grody Burger. Hey, be nice to him. What? Ugh. Is he beating me up? <gasps> he punched me! Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, huh? Charge me with assault? Charge away. I welcome it. For it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my exposition. The police, the courts, they all do my bit. He has dirt on everybody. This dude. That's why information gatherers are dangerous people. They will know all of your dirty shit. So you say. But I wonder. Is that kind of control really possible? It's called blackmail, Phoenix. I don't expect what- sorry. I don't expect what you to understand. Sorry. I don't expect you to understand. It is a world beyond your com uh, compensation. You came here from Grodeburgers, I presume? Mr. Grossburgers, yes. Then you must ask him. Why is it that this painting of his hangs here? Perhaps then he will tell you? Perhaps he will explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. Go now, skedaddle. There is nothing more to discuss. Hmm.
What if I show you this? Would you be so kind enough to cease your inane chattering and vacate the premises? Let me put it in a language you are sure to understand. Shut up and get out. I have nothing more to say. Alright, alright. Uh, I guess let's go see Mr. Grossberg. Hey, buddy. Huh? I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Is he sad about his painting? Maybe I should clear my throat? Ahem! <clears throat> Jump in Jehoshaphat's! Oh, you! What's wrong? You look so pensive. Like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm? I'm not senile yet! I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him. That much is clear. Mm, nope. Today's trial. See, so you came to see the trial? Yes, yes I did. Something was bothering me all last night, you see. Couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, you see, it's just... Me a sister, that poor girl. My boy, I owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if things had gone poorly for the girl. I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? I think I have a right to know. A right, Mr. Wright? No. No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. I'm starting to have a feeling I know what it is. So, I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh? Oh, I see. Mr. Grossberg? I have to admit, something has been bothering me. Oh? What is it? Well, out with it, my boy! You see, it's just... That big painting. Mr. Grossberg, sir. There was a giant painting hanging right there the other day, was there not? The one he said you had no intention of parting with? Yeah, he loved the shit out of that thing, so why is it gone? Well, I saw it. Today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp. Red White's office. So, you noticed. Suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected you say? Yes, and I know what it is. He's probably blackmailing you. Mr. White has something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail? Ooh, we were right. I think that painting is fairly gaudy proof. Farewell. This may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get this off my chest so I can finally rest easy again. After all, you were Miss Mia you were Mia's understudy. Perhaps it was fate? What's he talking about? Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corps is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years now. 15 years? Wait, but he said he only started it 10 years ago. What the fuck? All because of the DL6 incident, as you may have guessed. Uh, that's why that's written on the back, okay. The name on the back of these photographs. As you suspected, I could not stand in defense of Maya because of this. White would have destroyed me if I did. Now that's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But arresting Red White will be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Why? He has information on everyone. He gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound, unable to do harm to themselves, and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. Damn. What's the... what's the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than the sword and code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium. A spirit medium. A medium? Her name was Misty Faye. Ooh, is this Maya and Mia's mom? Sounds familiar. Faye. Indeed, she was Mia's mother. 
She had been investigating the murder at the at the bequest of the police, and she failed. As a result, police called her a fraud. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. Did all I could for her, and in the end, cleared her of wrongdoing. That murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is the DL6 incident. Well, why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know they were using a medium. That couldn't let people know. One person found out. I... I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It's an embarrassment to me now. Because I talked, police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard about it and he came to me. Only this time, the offer was blackmail. Ooh, you shouldn't have done that, dude. That's bad. I see. White controls the law of this country as he sees fit. Yet if you would still challenge him, have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something of what she found. Ooh, is that what she was hiding in the... In the statue, what she was trying to hide and then he came after her? <gasps> it's all coming together, guys. What if I show this to you? Sorry, sir. I borrowed this. Ah, uh, so it was you, my boy. Who is this man? Um, it's a long story. I've been eating that back now. Doesn't want to talk about it for some reason. Better give him back this photograph. Photograph returned to Mr. Grossberg. That's fine. Hmm. Wiretap. Sorry, my boy. I don't think I can help you with that. Okay, okay, fair. What do you think about this? Nope, can't help. Alright, um, alright, I guess we're going to the office. To the office! It's funny, looking at this room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Grossberg said there would be clues. Maybe I should have another look? All the cases the chief ever worked on filed are- worked on are filed here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? Uh, let's see if there's a, there's a record in this file that catches my eye. Damn it, these puns. A, B, F. Misty Faye. That's me and Maya's mother. Hmm. Should I take a look? Yeah, let's read it. I have tarnished the Fey name, leaving only these words, my mother vanished. I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the power that runs in my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold that information to the press. This parasite who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... Hmm. The record stops there. So Mia knew Grossberg. Oh, maybe that's why she went to go work at his office. Ooh. Alright. Let's do J through S. See where that gets us. Let's see. J through S. Nothing much in here. Maybe I'll just skim some of this. Yeah, let's skim. <sighs> well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest part's here, at the end in S. Suicide. Ew. Here's a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen... There's writing on most of these in pencil! White? This is Mia's handwriting. Wait, I get it. Mia's thought- it Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drove them all to... I can use these newspaper clippings. Hmm. Let's find the most disturbing one. Newspaper clipping added to the court record. Article about a politician's suicide. The word white is written in pencil at the top. 
Ooh, are we gonna bring that in as like a reason to pull him in for questioning? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's check the last one. T through Z. T, U, I know. W. White. Entire W section is missing. Was it taken? Ooh. Well, now what? What do we do now? Hmm. Apparently, Miss May is in questioning. I doubt they'll let me talk to her today. What about Maya? Actually, let's go here. Um. How about I show you this? I found this in Mia's files. So, she was investigating Red White, as I expected. Well, if you wanted to challenge him, you could present this in court. Not a bad idea. Alright, so he confirmed what I was thinking. Nope, can't help- no, 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 no! Oh, okay, just looking at it. That's fine. Um... What if I show you my badge? Nope, alright, fine. That's worth a try. Man, what do I do now? Hmm, the bellboy seems to be out. Huh? The sound of water coming from the shower. La dee da! Money making, money making, I got the money making blues. Someone seems to enjoy washing the showers. Uh, does that mean there's something else to look at here? The screwdriver's still stuck in the drawer. I better not touch it. No telling what the bellboy would do to me. Oops. Bottle and two glasses rest on the table. I'd better not touch them. No telling what the bellboy would do to me. Nice weather again today. I can see the fan company losses, of course. Is there really nothing else here to look at? What's the point of coming back here? Nothing, I guess. There's no snooping I can do while he's out. Unless I'm missing something. I don't know. Should we go to Blue Corp? Ooh, what if we show him the article? Well, aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself. But it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. Uh, this is a bad idea. This is the only clue that Mia left me. I'd better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. And this concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia? She had a file... Uh, she had a file filled with articles like this. Every one of them was labeled with a single word. White. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. Blackmailed him! You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him, either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all the suicide cases that Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation! Mr. Wrong! What is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, 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 I think not! You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia! Beep, Secretary's office, hello? Mr. Wrong will be leaving now! Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. Uh... He's right? You are absolutely right. I should be looking for the killer now. And actually, I've done better. I found him. He's sitting right in front of me. Just, just what are you insinuating? I think it was you. Mia was onto you. She was keeping tabs. 
For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then Mia was murdered, and all the documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So the culprit would be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it. Secretary's office. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Of course, sir. One moment, please. What? That you? Why are you calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor! I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fey case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quietude! I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over right here right away. The man standing in front of me, right? Right in front of me. He looks dazed, but could be violent. What? What man? Are you even listening? The executioner. The hatchet man. The liquidator. The killer man. What? Mr. White, this isn't another one of those... Chief Prosecutor. I do not believe you are in a position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police now. Did I not tell you, Mr. Wrong? You are a mere lawyer. As was Miss Mia. How dare you? I'll point the finger at you and you'll be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they may they make even you look competent. I'll defend myself, you jerk. I, I feel faint. <gasps> Detective Gumshoe reporting, sir! Ah, butts! Harry but Hey! God damn you people in your hairy butts. Right, actually. Phoenix Wright. And my friend's name is Larry. Oh, right! Sorry, pal! Butts was that murderer, right? He was innocent! Detective Gumshoe, I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. Wh what Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. Where the fuck? September 8th, 3.37pm, detention center. Visitor's room. Can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me. And the prosecution will probably will be in on it, of course, Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right! Mr. Wright! Oh, Maya! Great, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. Huh, <sighs> now I'm afraid we switched places. What? You mean you... I explained what had happened to Maya. We got ourselves thrown in prison, guys. I don't believe it. How many people does that man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother... My sister... And now you! This has gone too far! Mr. Wright, please tell me. Is there anything I can do? Um, well... Cheer me on! Well, you could cheer, cheer for me in court. Cheer for you? You mean, like a cheerleader? Huh? Um, yeah, like that! Alright, leave it to me! Huh? I'd better go get a uniform and some pom-poms. Wait, 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 wait! What, what, what? I'm kidding, it was a joke! No way! No, really, I was kidding. But thanks, it's good to know you're on my side. And there really isn't anything you can do for me anyway. TCSU1017, thanks so much for the follow! How are you? I hope you're enjoying the stream. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. 
I've got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. Then come to the trial tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Times may change, yet with crime it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put on initial court trials. Wow. Almost all finish in a day, most with a guilty verdict. What the fuck? This is not right! Never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. With the true culprit appearing as the star witness, you slimy bastard. This is it. Tomorrow it's me or him. <clears throat> Saving! Yay! Oh boy, we're gonna go into the trial. Yeah, we have time for the trial. Let's do this. September 9th, 952 AM District Court Defendant Lobby number one. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Ah, uh, Phoenix, look. Edgeworth, what the what do you want? What do you want from me? Prosecutor Edgeworth? I received a call from the pro chief prosecutor's office that office yesterday. What? I was told that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how you try to attack his testimony. If I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What does White have on the judge? Does the White have judge in the pocket? Ah, sorry. I like messed that up. What? Does White ha have the judge in his pocket too? So, you're saying I'm gonna be guilty. End of story? I'll do anything to get my verdict, Mr. Wright. Anything. Why? Why? How could you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. Whoa, that's like super pessimistic for a prosecutor. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth? You've changed. Hmm? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix, right? Phoenix? Well, court will be starting soon. What? But wait! Your defense attorney isn't even here yet. They're not... I'll be defending myself. That's what I thought was gonna happen. What?! Okay, let's do this. I mean, if we're gonna give me a crap lawyer anyway, I might as well just do it myself and not screw it up, you know? September 9th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are already quite clear to the court, today we will hear the testimony of a witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... It's like he already knows why. Hmm, if anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Um, let it go because we want him to testify, right? I think that's what- I think that's the play here. I don't really see a point in objecting to it. Forget it. I smell a trap. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? Oh my god, he's so gaudy! Er, your name? Yes, that's what I said! 
Oh dear, do my lo locutions confuse? Name. These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. White child? White boy? Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, we're gonna move on from that. I am the CEO, or to use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim, Miss Mia Fey? That would be a negatory! No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder? Correct! And you witnessed the murder from there? Ahem, why I tell you what you already know? Very well, Mr. White, you may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? Ho ho ho! I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer! Mm, let him have it, Phoenix. Witnesses account. Let's see, it was about 9 o'clock, I believe. I was quietly perusifying, or that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She too was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she, she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then it was all over. Hmm. If things occurred as you testify, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant, er, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. We're gonna press everything. How do you know what time it was? Because I am always absolutely perfect, you know? No, 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 you're not getting away with that. You are so mistrusting, Mr. Lawyer. So, what was the proper term for secretary again? Anyway, Miss May ordered room service for 9 o'clock. It happened soon after the room service arrived. Hmm, that's what Miss May said too. Um, should I keep pressing? I don't really... I don't think there's a point to pressing it at that. Wait, but then... The guy didn't said that he didn't see him in there though. Or did they stay out in the hallway? Hmm. Alright, let's try pressing further. True, the bellboy who brought the coffee saw Miss May. But he testified that he did not see you at the time. Ahem, this is your concern? Silly lawyer, Miss May received the coffee outside the room. Of course he could not see me. He would need to x-ray vision to pull off something like that. Hmm. Tell us, what were you doing at the time? And he says he was reading a newspaper. By window, you mean the one directly across from Fain Company Law Offices? Correct! That is the only window, you see. And there you were reading papers? Correct! The Gatewater is a businessman's hotel, and I'm a, bus a busy man who has business to do. Heard a bedlam. A bedlam? It must have been when you attacked, I assume. We see. Continue. And he looked out the window. So you were reading your papers until you heard that sound? But of course! I have no Snoop peeping out of windows at night. No Snoop? Yeah, right. He made a career out of Snooping. Okay, and he's saying that it was me. S Spiky haired! That's all you had to say- oh, Fine, Phoenix, fine. What you just said directly conflicts with Miss May's testimony. Miss May clearly stated that the assailant looked like a girl. 
I've always been proud of my eyesight, Mr. Lawyer. Just what is your eyesight? Winding. Counting both eyes, 40. 40? Don't add them together! I think the witness is trying to say his eyesight is good. Hey, whose side is the judge on anyway? And what did you do then? Called Miss May over. What was Miss May doing at that time? She had just finished watching a soap opera on TV and was weeping openly. Did you know she had been taping, tapping the Faye off his phone? Irrelevant. This has nothing to do with the case at hand. I care not. I will answer the lawyer's bold inquiry. Miss May was acting alone when she tapped the phone of this Fay woman. You'd make a good politician, Mr. White. Ho oh, ho, I know! After all, I am El Presidente. Please continue. Alright, saying that she ran and I gave chase. Can you be a little more detailed about that? Yes, please, I would like to drive a hole through through uh drive a truck through this hole. I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course, comprende, I understand. The victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to reflect the new detail? Victim ran to the left and you gave chase. I have testimony that says that she ran right. OBJECTION! Wait right there! Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left, but that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly stated that the victim ran right. Oh ho ho! It is simple! You have misheard her! I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here. And the victim here. If the victim ran to left as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door. Ah, oh, that's true, that makes no sense. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? You dumb. Very strange. I did see her run to the left. I did. Ooh, it was your left because you were the killer! You douchebag! Setting me up! Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run left. So he did witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Oh, hell yes. Both are right. Both witnesses are telling the truth, for once. Ha! I doubt it. Er, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean he was not viewing the crime from the hotel? If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law offices of Fane Company, of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Time to show the court where Mr. White was standing. He was the killer! This is where he was. Look! When the victim ran for the door, if he was watching from this point, to him it would appear that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing! Yeah, you damn right it is, because he's the killer! Order! I will have order! Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? Rapscallion! The postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, your honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far-fetched. Ho ho ho! You provide us with so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. 
What now? He's laughing? The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, might I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let's hear your testimony. Good luck. Can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. She ran to the quote unquote left. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left. And then you hit her savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow, but she only got hit once. That, may that doesn't make sense. That is what Miss May saw. You see, you hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Hmm, that does seem to make sense. No, it doesn't! Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? Oh, hell yes. You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. What do you mean by that? That is what I'm about to explain! You Americans, always so impatient. It does not become you. Hey, buddy, you're an American too! Alright, you're saying that I ran to the left. What do you mean, first? First? That is what comes before- or what happens next. You do speak English, right? Please sit back, relax. I will try to use simple words for your benefit. First, she ran to the left, and then... And then you hit her savagely... I didn't hit anyone! Now, now, Mr. Wright, there's no point ho hiding things from this court. I'm not hiding anything. Prosecution requests that the defense refrain from interrupting the testimony. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Ooh, why is he mad at me? Next, last of strength, ran to the right. What do you mean, next? Next is what comes after first. I know that. Then that is all you need to know, Mr. Lawyer. As I said, she turned and made a desperate dash to the right. Chased her and delivered the final blow. Stop saying it was me! But it was you! Mr. Wright, if you claim that it was not you, then show us proof. Arr, can I do nothing right? Nothing? May I continue? That's what Miss May saw. Hold on. See, you hit her twice. That's the one I really want to go after. Let's just cut to the chase here. Um... She only died from a single blow, right? Should we try this one? Let's try this one. Objection! Mr. White, the victim died from a single blow. What do you have to say to that? Er, er. Now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? Hmm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a ten minute break. Y yes yes quite. The witness is confused because he's lying! I emphatically request that there be no break, Your Honor. Yeah, we want justice! Don't let him get away! Very well. If the witness would care to revise his testimony, crowd's on my side. No slipping out of this now, White. Mr. White? Uh, okay. Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. What other window? Then the next moment I saw Miss Mia run to the left. Killer, you attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then she turned and ran for the door. 
Then you did her in with a single blow. Flap! Hmm. Thwap indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor! My stomach, you see, it, it is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. I don't know which thing to do yet. Let's see, you looked at the- WHAT OTHER WINDOW?! You heard that thing fall? What exactly was that thing? Huh? Oh! Oh, that? Um, the glass light stand! Right, the one that had fallen over the scene. Phoenix? Doesn't something about that strike you as odd? How the fuck would he hear that? Yep, very odd. Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. White? Huh? W what? You're saying you saw the glass light- Oh, it was behind- Not in the frame of the window! How could he have seen that? Y yes Then change your testimony to reflect that. Sorry, my bad! And the witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course! Lightstand was lying on the floor when he looked. How could he see that? Yeah, there's no way he would see that. Uh, broken beyond all recognition. No, but he wouldn't be able to recognize it either. Alright, glass shards are map. Hmm. Let's present the glass shards, I guess, and then see how that goes. OBJECTION! Mr. White. It was impossible for you to have seen the light stand. What? The stand broke into pieces when it fell. Oof! Just by seeing the broken pieces, you would have no idea that it was a light stand. So tell me, exactly when was it that you saw the stand? Answer the question! It, isn't it obvious? I saw the stand before it fell over! So, you saw the stand before the victim was attacked, then? C correct That would be no problemo, right? Hmm. Big problem. There's a big problem, or er, I mean, problem here. What problem is this? Mr. White, let me make sure I have this straight. You saw the glass light stand through the window from the hotel. Before the incident occurred? Correct! That is so! It's conclusive, definitive, undeniable, unimpeachable. No, it's impossible! You couldn't have seen the stand. What? Why couldn't he? You have proof? Oh, hell yeah. I sure do, your honor. The person in the hotel could not have seen the stand before it fell over. Look at this. These are the floor plans of the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, your honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well, note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White? What do you have to say to that? <laughs> Ridiculousity! Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you don't have been able to see it after it fell either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards of a glass light stand. So, when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell. And the only place you could have seen that from is from inside the Fay Law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Gah! Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor? I... I... 
Miss Mia. <laughs> Looks like we're about to get our verdict. Shut up, Edgeworth! That's far enough, Phoenix, right? What? Ugh, I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, hmm? Wh what I said, you should confess your crime. Ergo, confess that you placed the wiretap. The, the wiretap? Damn you, Edgeworth. Order! Order! Mr. Edgeworth, explain it to the court what you mean to th by this. This is a little contradictory for you, Edgeworth. Yeah, right? This bastard. Distinguished members of the court. Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Fay. What does that have to do, Your Honor? The question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office, and by who? No, you wouldn't! Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Faye's office. Am I correct? C correct You are most correct, Miles! Give me a break! Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I reached Faye and Company law offices! That is when I saw that accursed light stand. Edgeworth, why are you helping him? Now I'm confused. Please explain to the court what all this means, Mr. Edgeworth. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He wants that verdict, you jerk. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand. At the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. White would like you to believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been to that office well before the murder took place, when he went to place the wiretap. He could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed for its base for the baseless conjecture it is. Edgeworth, Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretapping. Ahem, leave it to me. I I feel faint. Wiretapping. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fane Company law offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Hey, this wasn't there back then. <gasps> Hold on. Can I look at the receipt? No. But this is probably the receipt for when she bought the glass light stand. And I remember that they said that the receipt was from the day before. So, assuming and hoping that this is indeed the receipt for the damn glass light stand, then... Then I think we're good. That's the most logical thing I can think of for how we're gonna get out of this. Hmm. So you saw the stand before the night of the incident. And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over by the sound. Yeah, like, has to be on track because they never tell us, like, useless details. Well, okay, sometimes I do. But, like, something like that, like, it's gotta come up. And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over by the sound. Correct! That is right! I see. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine. Gah! What am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. Slippery bastard. Beginning of September. Do you have proof? Miss April May knew the details of Miss Fay's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Huh. 
Right. Should I just present the receipt and go for it? Let's do it. If I'm wrong, worst thing that happens is we lose a bar. Objection! Damn it! This is not gonna work because the music didn't stop! We're too early! I jumped the gun. Uh, how exactly are that events in the statement related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think. Alright, alright. Oh, I lost two bars? Damn, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I don't think that one made any points to the judge. Alright, alright, alright. We'll just keep pressing him until we figure it out. Was it really you that went into the office, or was it Miss May? Unidentified fingerprints several days old were found in the Fay and Co Company law offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. If I know Edgeworth, he's already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the Fane Company law offices. Of course, he had done so to place the wiretap. Hmm. Okay. Why did you tap Mia's phone? This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. Both very slippery. Yeah, they're both very, very slippery. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. That's when he saw the glass light stand. Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a beautious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Damn it. There's nothing there for me to press him on. Oh well, maybe he's rattled enough so I can buff something out of him. But what can I bluff him on? Man, what do we do? Hmm. Enter the Fane Company law offices. Of course he had done so to place the wiretap. I mean, we haven't used the wiretap yet. Should we present the wiretap, maybe? I can't think of anything else. Uh-oh. Shit! No, 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 no! Tsk, tsk. I'm afraid that as far as you go, Mr. the time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably- No! No, no, no! I was just- Ah, oh, fuck! No more, I can't take this anymore, Mr. Wright. Are you giving up? Y yes, you're on it. No! I didn't mean to! Phoenix. Phoenix, over here! I know that voice. M Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. M M Mia? Where? Where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Ah, you're finally awake. Ah! Ghost! Ghost! You're being haunted. H hey, Phoenix. <clears throat> Dak, that's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. Yep, pass out a second time. Oh! Y you're... Maya? 
Didn't you know the Fey women have strong psychic powers? Yes, you, I was. I've been told. When you accepted your defeat in court, it appeared that was enough of a shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So Maya's channeling you, Mia? That's right. I'm Maya, but I'm also Mia. Transformation for the first time. Yep. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's what I came here to tell you. But, but... We don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have that receipt in the court record, right? Um, oh, yeah. The one you wrote Maya on? Phoenix, White wrote that, not me. So, so what do I do with it? Flip it over, dumbass! Look at the front of the receipt. The front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. $1,000. Wow, big spender. Item. Glass light stand! So here's the funny thing about this. Later games, you can examine items. That's what I was remembering! I'm like, why can't I flip this damn receipt over? I must be thinking about other games. It's been too long since I played this. Yeah, to prevent stuff like this is so stupid. Phoenix, flip everything over! Look at your damn evidence! <clears throat> Date of purchase, September 4th. September 4th? That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa. Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. Impossible. There you go. I think the court is about to reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. Receipt updated in the court record. Great for drama, though. Eating popcorn. This is a very popcorn-worthy thing that we're doing now. September 9th, 1.16pm, District Court, courtroom number one. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is the defendant rather... Are you all right, Mr. Wright? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then, let's start where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Your Honor! Please, give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. But, as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an opinion on the ma this matter? I say, let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. I'm gonna get you, you slimy son of a bitch! Now we can do the receipt. Objection! Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? <laughs> You're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The, the other side? Your Honor. Would you tell the court what is written on the other side of that receipt? Hmm. Well, a glass light stand. And the date of purchase? Why, that's the day before the murder! You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Fane Company law offices at the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No, it's in. Pass achievable! Uh oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you'll agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then, that is all for the trial of. Shut up, Edgeworth! 
Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. Eh? What? No way he can worm out of his way out of this one. English Red... <laughs> Do you speak English, Mr. Red White? God damn it, Edgeworth. Oh, wait. I forgot. It's Edgeworth. There is a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Ergo, I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. <laughs> I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. Uh, I think we have to object. Plus, we have the murderer here now, and they're definitely gonna, like, make shit up if we let him go. Mr. White's guilt is so obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Logic is your strong point in your games, Edgeworth, not in this game. Oh yeah, he had a game! I played that and I remembered nothing from it. <laughs> if anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it would be me, the prosecution. I need a day to ascertain whether these new claims have any basis in factual evidence. Hmm. I see. Objection denied. No! What? The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. No, there's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sure to come up with just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me and all. Oh, you sparkly bastard. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course, thank you for your time. <sighs> the witness will stay. M Mia? Phoenix, read this note out loud. Mia, what's this? Thank God, Mia. Please help me. List of people's names in Mia's handwriting. Ooh. Memo received from Mia. Ronner, if I may. You are quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. Mia going in for the save. Bet I am. My life is writing on this one. I have something I would like to read to the court. Mia's memo. Save me! <clears throat> The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. S stop! Desist! Halt! P please stop! Make him stop! How? How did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt right here, right now. Or else this list will be released to the press. Ooh, blackmail the blackmailer! Hell yeah! I'm down for this. I- I confess. I confess! I- I did it. I hit her. I hit Miss, M Miss Mia with the thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. Ooh, Edward looked mad! Well, I see no reason to continue this trial. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again! That was quite a spirited defense. Yes, Your Honor. I guess you could say that. If only you knew how spirited it was. Hmm, well, this court finds the defense. Ahem, rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not guilty! Woo! Party! That is all. This court is adjourned. Yay, we did it! September 9th, 224 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, I never thought I'd be seeing this again. But congratulations, you're lucky I was born a fae. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me, and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live- But you're not- I don't- The statement hurts my head. Cause... She's... 
not alive? I don't really want to think about it. Alright, let's, 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 we'll just continue on. As long as you live. My time here is running out. Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. But what? No! There's still so much to say! Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Ch chief! <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix. Oh yeah, Phoenix caught on. He was thinking the same thing I did. I was like, what the fuck? Can you come to the office tonight? Say, 9 o'clock? The office? I'll see you later. Why at the same time? That just like is bad juju. Chief Mia! September 9th, 9.02 p.m. Bain Company Law Offices. Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came! Mia? I was kind of worried you might not. Huh? Of course I came. Well then? I'm pretty hungry. I'm pretty hungry! How about a burger? Uh, Mia? <laughs> you should see your face! Mia! What are you talking about? It's me! Maya! Uh, Maya! What? Did I look like just my... Ah, did I look like my sister? Look like you were her. Hmm, I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Uh, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See, Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... Huh? You are her, uh, ballistics and everything. Okay, okay. She means the office. This office. Someone has to help with the new Wright and Company law offices, right? And who better but me? Maya Faye, reporting for duty. Wait, no, on second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick, Maya here. Ready to get down to business. Nick because Phoenix. Nick, okay, okay. I didn't think about that in a second. I was like, I do kind of remember she called him Nick, but I'm like, it's such a weird name, but it's like Phoenix, Nick, okay. To defeat court cases! You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name. Mia said that's what your friend Larry calls you. Oh, that makes sense. Nick? You know what this means. We're partners. And thus the beginning of a beautiful friendship begins. Yes, I agree. You know, when I think about it, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. Mia remembered Larry's name. Hey, she did! Nice. You missed the- the they were saying Harry Butts again earlier and I was just like, oh my god, why? <laughs> but if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Right in company law offices. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Aww. It's like the thing at the end of Heaven's Word. <laughs> Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here. Watching. Right! Okay, Nick, let's do it. Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy! Burgers! There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on! Time's a wasting. Oh, okay. Wait up! Oh, you cried at the end of this? Oh, I don't think I remember, like, crying during anything in this particular game, but I think maybe later on. Brand new episode! Yes, please save. One of the best court cases. Is this the Tonosum? Oh, yeah, Turnabout Samurai. I remember I really liked this one. And I had the sound effect saved somewhere for it because it was really good. But I don't remember how it's going to work. So that'll be a thing. Um, but it is now about 10.30. So I think that's going to do it for tonight. Um, we'll maybe try to do this more again tomorrow or later this week. We'll see. We'll see when.
I'm sure it will be sometime soon. At the very latest, it'll be during the weekend, but hopefully tomorrow. Um, yeah, thanks to everybody for the watching, the follows. If you are watching right now and have not followed yet and want to see more, you know, please be sure to hit that follow button so that you can see when we go live for it next time. Uh, and, you know, like, feel free to chat and say hi if you want to. That's cool. Um, but yeah, thanks all for watching. Hope to see you next time. And, you know, for now, have a great night. And, yeah, enjoy. See you all then. Bye!